You know that moment that you just like sip your coffee and you come alive for the first time that day? <laughs> it just happened. I was like, since we last spoke. Um, I'm really excited to be making this video and to be talking to you again. I feel like the last time we spoke was right around the time that I had given birth um, and I'm four months postpartum now. So I am so sorry that it's taken me so long to make another video. Um, I have been just finding my groove and getting settled into motherhood if you can ever really do that. but. I am doing really well. I'm going through leap number four right now with Elijah, and it has been very hard. Um, this is definitely the hardest leap that we've gone through with him so far. He is very needy, very clingy, wants to be held all the time. I'm soaking it all in, but man, is it hard. Um, Nathan is back at work now, so I'm full-time with Elijah at home while working full-time at home, and so finding my groove with that has been really fun <laughs> as well. Um, but I think I'm finally settling into a routine that works for me, and so I can't wait to really dive in and show you everything that's been going on. It obviously is not gonna be all in this one video, but I figured I could just come back into my YouTube space and just share a day in the life of what it's been like with Elijah, four months postpartum for me and him being four months old now. Um, and yeah, I love YouTube. This is how I consume like 90% of my content. And so being on here and sharing my life with you is honestly such a joy. I hope that you enjoy watching my videos as much as I love creating them for you. And today is a beautiful day here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The sun is shining. So hopefully Nathan, Elijah and I will get out of the house and do something exciting. But there's a lot to be done in the house that I'm sure we could do too, so. All right. <laughs> we were just at the park, it was a beautiful day. We did a little roundabout, we got kind of lazy, so we're at Target now. And this is like one of our favorite date ideas, um, just to walk around Target. It is a little bit dangerous though because you end up spending money that you don't want to. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, so Elijah's been napping for almost two hours now, which never happens, but I figured I would use this time to kind of catch you up to speed on, oh, oh my gosh, I almost fell. Um, I figured I would catch you up to speed on how he is sleeping and how he's eating right now at four months. So Elijah started sleeping through the night around three months old. He goes to bed pretty late though. He goes to sleep at like nine or 10. 
right around the time that we start to wind down. Um, we give him his last bottle at that time and it's usually a six ounce bottle and he'll sleep through the night. He'll wake up around like six um, in the morning and we'll give him another six ounce bottle in the morning because that's like a really long stretch without eating. So we'll always give him a big bottle in the morning. And then throughout the day, he eats every three hours and he eats about four ounces. And he also naps every three hours. Um, and sometimes the naps are like 15, 30 minutes. Sometimes they're an hour. And like today he's having a two hour nap. I don't wake him up. I let him kind of wake up on his own. I don't, um, feed him right on the dot unless I know that he's hungry. I am just like really intuitive with it. I um, would never go like way too long without feeding him, but he is really good at vocalizing what he needs when he needs it. And I'm not doing any like sleeping course or anything like that right now. Um, I probably should. I feel like it'll <laughs> probably be really helpful for us, but he's been doing really well on his own. But I figured I would kind of let you know where we're at with everything because I remember when I would watch these vlogs, I would that was like one thing that I was so curious about. And remember, every baby is different. So you might, your baby might be, um, you know, in a sleep regression at this point and not sleeping as much as Elijah is, or he might be eating a lot more frequently. Um, Luckily, because we, um, that's another thing I forgot to mention, right around three months, I stopped breastfeeding and we started formula. Once we started formula, he seems to get full after every feeding. And so, um, yeah, it's been going really well. And I just figured I would update you on that because I remember being really curious whenever I would watch vlogs um, of babies around this age too. <laughs> Okay, so a funny thing about postpartum is you lose so much of your hair, but really your baby just pulls out the rest because it's a struggle. So the last time that you saw the three of us, it was during our birth vlog. And I was wearing the same hat. <laughs> A lot of you guys had such wonderful things to say about Nathan just during the birth and as my birth partner. Um, so I figured it would be fun to just bring him into this video and just kind of chat about the birth a little bit now that Elijah is here with us. So how has fatherhood been so far for you? Daddy life? Yes. Super dope. Yeah, are you super in your element? Oh, absolutely. I was born for this. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's why um, he was just so amazing during the birth. Like, Nathan was born to be a dad. Like, this is what he's always wanted to do with his life. And so it's so cool to see him step into that role. Um, what tips would you have for any other dads that are about to experience the same thing, like going into a birth and delivery? Into a birth and delivery? Mm-hmm. And then to fatherhood in general. Fatherhood, you're never prepared. Mm -hmm. mm. Have grace on your child. I've never been mad at this kid. Yeah. Like legit. Like he he cries and that's the only way he can communicate. So mm -hmm. you gotta take that and figure out what they're trying to tell you and care for them one thing in the beginning too i will mention um we watched a video i'll link it below it was about learning how to differentiate your baby's cries and how they have different cries when they need different things um and that actually helped nathan and i a lot at the very beginning when we were just getting to know elijah no. um did he spit up no oh. um it helped us a lot to really get to know him and what he needed from us. So if you guys are, you know, about to go into that or in, you're in the newborn phase, that might be something worth checking out. Um, but specifically with labor and all of that, like what would you recommend for dads? Mm. Or a partner, yeah. I don't know. It just kind of happened. I was super afraid. I'm sensitive, so like I, 
was like worried that when she got upset um, or like um, short that I would take it personally um, and that did not happen um, I but if if mom who is giving birth like does get angry or is in so much pain that she starts kind of being a little sassy. I was at one point a little bit rude oh, yeah. to <laughs> to the nurses because I was in so much pain and it was not like I was intentionally wanting to be rude to them. It was just that they were trying to, to do things to help me that weren't helping. I was in so much pain I couldn't control it. But if your partner, if your the mama is in so much pain that she's starting to take it out on you, the dad, just remember, like, this is a very short period of time. Be super gracious to mama. Like, you want to make sure that she has everything that she needs in you as a support partner and, um, you know, have, like, muster up all of the grace that you can for that one day um and you know if she needs ice on her head then bring her ice if she needs a wet towel do that whatever it is that she needs like just be ready and willing to serve um and we, listen to her like amanda would just tell us like that pressure is not good um i don't want to rag on my head right now um and just follow follow her lead yeah because you know dad's they they don't go through what moms go through in labor and delivery um pain wise and so one thing that you can do to be there for um your partner during labor is just to like serve them and take care of them like as best as you can it's like one day of just being able to to serve them and meet their needs however they need them and moms i would say too like be as vocal with your needs as as you can like Remember that you have a voice, your choices matter. Nathan and I had made decisions on what we wanted for our birth. And like you guys saw, it didn't end up going as we had originally planned. We didn't end up delivering at the birthing center. We had to go to the hospital. And so, um, you know, even with that change, I wanted to make sure that my desires for my birth were met as long as the baby and me were healthy. And so, um, that's one thing I would say too, like don't be afraid to, to talk to the doctors and nurses about what you want and um, remember that like having a choice and it is so important and you they should honor that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I've talked a little bit about like where Elijah is at with his sleeping and his eating right now. He's doing really well. I think he's at the very tail end of his fourth leap because today was a great day. He's been doing really well. Um, but yeah, I guess last thing is, Nathan, how are you feeling being back at work full time? How are you managing like being away from us 40 hours a week? Mm. I guess more than 40 hours a week with like commute no. and stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, it's hard. Um working like mid shifts, like 10 to seven or 11 to eight, getting home around eight or nine can be tough. Um, luckily I get to be with him at least for his last feeding um, and then kind of put him to bed and let him in to get some work done. Um, and then days off typically try to get Amanda some time where she can step away and just mean the, mean the him for, for a little bit. Um, but it's good. It's sad. I miss him. <laughs> I will say one thing I didn't mention earlier in the little video I made about where he's at with everything is he's still sleeping in his bassinet beside our bed. Um, he's four months old and we have made the decision that we're going to transition him into his nursery. Sure. But someone is... Um, just keeps postponing that so hopefully that'll happen soon I know that it's gonna be a very smooth transition because Elijah's sleeping through the night with no problem um, but yeah I mean just again like you you guys are the parents you get to do whatever feels right for you um, there's no like timeline for that you some moms put babies in the nursery right from when the baby's born so whatever feels right for you you can do that but i'm gonna wrap up the video here nathan's really itching to go watch some baseball with elijah um and i'm actually going to read a little bit and yeah we're gonna make some dinner and just relax but i hope that you guys enjoyed 
our little like chill day in the life. And hopefully you'll see us again soon. Let us know what other videos you want to see. Um, and if you want to see a little bit more of like my day-to-day -day life, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I share on there every single day. So that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.